Watch as I make this. Take some leftover resin, an extra tray, and booyah, nice piece. Hang on. Hey everyone. Okay, I have a little bit tray. See, see the size of my hand? This guy's like small, he's cute. Like you could put several pairs of earrings in it. I don't know. But it's in a little enamel tray that I picked up off of Amazon. And I have some resin left over, so we're just gonna play. This is just play time. So what I've got here, I'm out of clear, but I've got a lot of my white base tint left over. So what I thought I would do is literally use it as my, well, as my base. Usually I put uh, some clear resin down and then apply the colors on top of that. But in this case, I think I'll use the white. And then I've got a nice red, a cherry, and some gold, a little bit of black currant. Make a puddle and then spritz that around and see what develops as far as cells and stuff. Should be fun. Let's see. Could be fingers. Since it's a tray, I want to be careful about keeping my hands clean so that way I don't get stuff on the outside of it. All right, here comes the e gun. And it's got a great amount of time for you to play with it. Uh, I've gotten two hours of working time. I might have to eat that up more. But I'm getting to the end of that. <laughs> I think I'm at about an hour 45. So I gotta do a nice little dance. I gotta heat up, but not too much where I can't touch the metal tray. So what I'm trying to do is get a little bit of a coating all over, go up around the sides just a little bit. I think that gives a nice finished edge to it, but that's just me. The trick is to get about the same height all the way around. Okay. So it's self-leveling, so I'm not worried about that. It'll make a nice little puddle at the bottom. Okay, so I've got Color Obsession Cherry, which is a nice transparent. I'm going to put a little bit there. A little bit of a black currant, which is not kind of like a blue-violet. What I'm going to do here is I've got okay, a little bit of a clear uh, glitter, but it's got some purple in it from when I was working with it. I'm just going to hit it around in a few spots. So when this moves around and if there's any cells that develop, it might show some glitter through it. Let's see, a little bit more in some areas here. This is a little bit of an interference that has red, a red tint to it. I don't know if you can see that. Well, you definitely see it in the, in the puddle. I'm gonna put a hair more red. So usually stone coat base tint works really well with creating cells when you put the base tint, you pour the color, have the color move over it, and it'll kind of separate things out and create these cells. So that's the theory. All right, 
so what I'm doing is I'm overall I'm heating this up because remember it's getting at the end of the working time and I'm gonna hit this area here and then kind of blow it out and it's gonna feather it out And I think I'm gonna leave it. Well, maybe I might go up a little bit. There. This is touching the sides a little bit, so I kind of wanted that to do the same. Let's see if I can get this to do the same. Oh, I don't wanna lose those cells. That's kind of cool. All right, let me bring you guys in for a close up. Now that turned out really neat. Nice little spider webs going on there. A little bit of hint of glitter. Ooh, multiple color cells. I love it when that happens. Got some going on there too. This is gonna get a little bit more developed so it ought to be interesting. All right, this is the next day. It cured up rather nicely. I'm happy with it. Lots of little bitty cells, some big cells. Oops, let's try it. There we go. Sorry about that. A lot of detail for a little piece. All right, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, but more importantly, Hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video up. Later.